good morning dear students today our topic is pericardium so this is a specimen of heart along with fibrous pericardium and the root of the great vessels okay so what are the great vessels here this is the ascending aorta with its three branches from right to left brachiocephalic trunk left common carotid and left subclavian and this is the pulmonary trunk which is dividing posteriorly into two pulmonary arteries heart along with fibrous pericardium is a content of middle mediastinum and it extends from second to sixth costal cartilage opposite thoracic 5 to thoracic 8 vertebra now what is pericardium pericardium is a fibrocerous sac which encloses the heart and the root of the great vessels it consists of two layers outer fibrous pericardium and inner serous pericardium now fibrous pericardium this is a open sac the fibrous pericardium is a open sac it is cone shaped base is below and apex truncated apex is above as it is a open sac it is pierced by the great vessels that is the aorta pulmonary trunk and the great veins this is the superior vena cava inferior vena cava these two are the upper pulmonary veins and these two are the lower pulmonary veins so fibrous pericardium why it is open sac because it is pierced by these two great arteries and the six great veins and below the base of the fibrous pericardium it is attached to the central tendon of the diaphragm you see this is a part of the central tendon of the diaphragm it is attached along with this fibrous pericardium and apex is blending to the tunica adventitia of the great vessels now in examination a question is often asked how do you identify which part is ascending aorta which part is arch of aorta that is by the presence of or by the attachment of fibrous pericardium because ascending aorta there is attachment of fibrous pericardium but as it pierces to come out from the fibrous pericardium in the arch of aorta there is no attachment of the fibrous pericardium so fibrous pericardium up to the attachment of the fibrous pericardium this part is ascending aorta beyond that this is the arch of aorta right now inside the fibrous pericardium there is serous pericardium serous pericardium is a closed sac and it is it consists of two layer one is outer parietal layer one is inner visceral layer and mind that heart is intra fibrous but extra serous in position that means heart is within fibrous pericardium but in outside the serous pericardium now dear students you can see this layer this is the fibrous pericardium this leathery tough layer from the outside this is fibrous pericardium right and if you turn it on the inner side you can see a glossy layer that is nothing but the parietal layer of the serous pericardium so outside it is fibrous pericardium inside it is lined by this glossy layer this is the parietal layer of the serous pericardium and on the heart along in the heart with its the visceral layer is intimately blended and the visceral layer separates from the myocardium by the sub epicardial fatty tissue you can see here a lot of fatty tissue so it is separated from the myocardium by the means of the fatty tissue and this visceral layer forms the epicardium part right 
so this is your fibrous pericardium and along with the serous pericardium now mind that heart is intra fibrous but extra serous in position next is two very very important feature in the serous pericardium two sinus one is transverse pericardial sinus one is oblique pericardial sinus first transverse pericardial sinus so what is transverse pericardial sinus transverse pericardial sinus is a transverse passage it is a transverse passage in front of the transverse passage there is the two great vessels that is the ascending aorta and the pulmonary trunk so this is a transverse passage which is bounded anteriorly by the two great vessels ascending aorta and the pulmonary trunk and posteriorly by the veins see this is the superior vena cava and these two are the upper pulmonary veins so this is a transverse passage bounded anteriorly by the ascending out and the pulmonary trunk and posteriorly by the superior vena cava and upper two pulmonary veins and when in the examination you are asked to show the transverse sinus just place the heart on your left palm and put your right index finger just behind the aorta and the pulmonary trunk from right side to left side okay this from right side to left side so this is the position of the transverse sinus now if we consider the development the transverse sinus is the transverse passage between the arterial end and the venous end of the primitive heart tube and the main thing is that it is visero visceral in nature that means it is formed within the visceral layer of the serous pericardium why due to degeneration of the central cells of the dorsal mesocardium so this is visero visceral now what is the boundary boundary is you see anteriorly the ascending aorta and the pulmonary trunk posteriorly that is the superior vena cava and the upper two pairs of pulmonary veins above above is the bifurcation of the pulmonary trunk into two pulmonary arteries right and left pulmonary artery and below below what is there below is the left atrium so this is the position of the transverse sinus okay and what is the importance of the transverse sinus during the open heart surgery the surgeon has to put a ligature around the transverse sinus to tie the great vessels to control the hemorrhage during the surgery so this is its clinical importance next so mind that it is visero visceral next comes oblique sinus so what is oblique sinus where you will get it you will get it on the posterior aspect here so what is that this is a cuddly sac this is a cuddly sac that means it is closed on all sides but except it is open below right and it is formed between the limbs of the j shaped attachment of the serous pericardium so see first this is the superior vena cava this is the right and this is the left brachiocephalic vein joining to form the superior vena cava this part is the superior vena cava and this is the opening of the inferior vena cava so this two veins opens into the right atrium so this part is the right atrium next here is two opening this is the upper pulmonary veins and below these two are the lower pulmonary veins so students you can see there is formation of an inverted j shaped structure see inverted j shaped structure between the left two pulmonary veins on the left side this is the j one limb of j and another limb that is formed by the superior vena cava upper and lower pulmonary vein 
and the inferior vena cava. So this is another limb of J, superior vena cava, upper and lower pulmonary vein and the inferior vena cava. This is another limb of J. So this is a J-shaped structure and the visceral layer of the serous pericardium, it is reflected as parietal layer of serous pericardium along this J. Okay, so we will get the oblique sinus between these two layers. So if I put my hand, put my fingers like this from below on the right side. See, I am putting my finger from the below on the right side between these two limbs of J. This is the left limb and this is the right limb. So we, my finger is in the oblique sinus. So mind that it is the visero, it is the parieto visceral in nature. Within the two layers of the serous pericardium, parietal layer and the visceral layer. Now what is the boundary? See anterior to my finger, that is the left atrium. So anterior side, there will be left atrium. Left side, these two left pulmonary veins. Right side, superior vena cava, right to pulmonary veins and inferior vena cava. Above, there is the left atrium. And below, it is open. So this is the cul-de-sac. And mind that the left atrium, it forms floor for the transverse sinus and roof for the oblique sinus because this is forming the roof. So roof for the oblique sinus and floor for the transverse sinus. Now see, between the two layers of the serous pericardium, parietal layer, this is the parietal layer and the visceral layer. Between these two layers, there is a sac potential sac which is called the pericardial sac and this pericardial sac contains a small amount of fluid say 50 ml but when this there is larger accumulation of the fluid serous fluid it will lead to pericardial evolution and it may this pericardial sac may contain 300 ml of fluid okay and what is the function of the pericardium the fibrous pericardium it gives protection to the heart and it allows the distension of the heart. And the pericardial fluid and serous pericardium, it actually gives a space during the ventricular contraction and ventricular dilatation and there is smooth movement of the heart due to presence of the pericardial fluid, right? Next we are coming to the development, arterial supply and venous drainage. The parietal layer along the parietal layer of the uh, pericardium and the serous pericardium. So they are developing from a separate source and the fibrous pericardium is developing from a separate source. Fibrous pericardium along with the central tendon of the diaphragm they are developed from the septum transversum and the parietal layer it is developed from the somatopleuric layer of the mesoderm. And the visceral layer, it is developed from the splanchnopleuric layer of the mesoderm. Now what is the arterial supply? The fibrous pericardium along with the parietal pericardium, it is supplied by the internal thoracic artery and the descending aorta, descending thoracic aorta. Visceral pericardium, this is supplied by the coronary arteries. Now venous drainage, parietal pericardium, and the fibrous pericardium drained by the internal thoracic artery and the visceral pericardium by the coronary sinus. Nerve supply, these two are supplied by the phrenic nerve and the visceral layer supplied by the coronary plexus, that is the autonomic plexus. Next, a little bit of applied importance. So as I told you, transverse sinus, this is very important for the cardiac surgeon during the open surgery, open heart surgery, the surgeon must put a ligature here, over here to control the hemorrhage, right? And if there is accumulation of the fluid within the pericardial cavity, th that may lead to a condition that is called cardiac tamponade. So what is cardiac tamponade? The cardiac tamponade occurs due to excessive accumulation of the fluid in the pericardial cavity and it compresses the heart. So during ventricular dilatation, there is obstruction of the 
distension of the heart and this may lead to decreased cardiac output and lower blood pressure okay and increased pulse rate so this is a condition now if we have to approach the pericardial cavity that is the draining of the pericardial cavity draining fluid from the pericardial cavity is known as the paracentesis so if we approach the pericardial cavity so what are the way or what are the area from where we can approach there is two route one is the parasternal route and one is the subcostal route so parasternal route is over here that is actually the pericardium comes in direct relation to the body of the sternum below the fourth costal cartilage below the fourth costal cartilage pericardium comes in direct relation to the lower lower half of the left part of the body of the sternum due to presence of the cardiac notch because left lung has a cardiac notch so this may be utilized for the any injection to the pericardium or pericardiocentesis and a needle is approached through this area towards the pericardium and the pericardial fluid can be drained and another is one is the subcostal approach so subcostal approach what is that below the gif sternum on the left side below the gif sternum costo gifoid junction a needle is entered and the pericardial fluid can be drained okay thank you